Well, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for the help and support and advice. It really is very much appreciated. And in particular, Tony Berndred, who suggested that um, in order to avoid the cold garage for long periods, I uh, do a bit of planning uh, sort of in the warm house in front of the fire with a coffee. Um, so uh, I was quite fortunate actually. One of my neighbours gave me um, um, a diary and uh, the bonus is it's actually a 2019 diary as well. Um, so what I've decided based upon Tony's advice is to try and do a bit of planning up front in the house um, and then uh, if I can detail sort of what I'm, uh, the steps I'm going to take to actually achieve a particular piece of work, um, then it will cut down the amount of time I'm in the cold uh, garage. So that's what I'm going to try and do from now on. But uh, you never know, plans might change. Uh, so in this video, what I'm going to do is uh, try a test assembly. Now, I've already made the uh, conrod, um, the piston, the cylinder, uh, the crankshaft, the crankshaft bearings, um, and the standard. So um, the only thing sort of outstanding is the uh, valve covers and the valve and the timing. Um, so, but what I thought I'd do is just do a test assembly based upon what I've made so far, just to see if it uh, turns okay with the flywheel. Um, so um, I hope you like the video and I uh, hope to see you later. Oh, and by the way, a nice warm dog helps as well. So first of all I need to drill some holes in the cylinder covers and uh, I'm not sure if um, I've shown this before but uh, in order to put the um, little 80mm 3-jaw chuck on the rotary table I've got this adapter plate uh, made out of aluminium I think I got it from Kronos or RDG not too sure and um, it's got um, uh, a little protrusion there which is two, two more tape which fits in nicely in there and uh, this is a 55 millimeter sort of register which the uh, fits the chuck spot on so it's just a matter of um, putting some screws in here then to fix the chuck and then putting the chuck on here and holding it down with some screws here. So the table's been centred. Um, I've put a spacer in the form of a washer underneath the cylinder cover just to protect the uh, bottom of the jaws for when I drill through. Um, I've got a centre drill in here. I've um, zeroed um, the table dials and um, I've moved the y-axis let me see 14.29 uh, millimeters that way uh, which is effectively um, half the diameter I'm looking for so it's one and an eighth of an inch so um, like I said that equates to 14.29 that way in terms of radius I also double checked it with the uh, dial as well. So um, we're ready to proceed. Um, so I'll drill uh, the first centre. Then what I'll do is I'll turn the dial um, 18 turns. So each turn is 4 degrees. So 18 turns equates to 72 degrees, which is a fifth of 360 degrees because I want to drill 5 holes. Back off, go around again, lock the table, which I'd forgotten to do previously, and this should read 72, which it does. So 
So I'll continue going round until I've done five and then I'll uh, repeat it again with um, a 2.6mm drill bit which is a 7BA clear. Well that worked out ok, so I'll repeat the same process off camera on the bottom cover. Well the bottom cover's worked out ok and uh, now I need to uh, drill and tap 7BA um, into the cylinder to be able to hold these covers. Um, now I need to sort of have a think about this and work out how to hold this uh, on the milling machine. So. Uh, once I've sussed it out, I'll uh, get back to you. So I've just turned uh, this piece of aluminium. So this diameter here is a very nice snug fit for the bore of the cylinder. And the bottom of the cylinder pushes up against the jaws. And I've tapped the end with an M6 thread. And if I put this little washer in here, and screw that on it'll make the cylinder a nice tight fit so now I can put this on the rotary table and I can drill and tap the holes well, I double checked that the uh, rotary table was centred and um, I've put the three, three jaw chuck on and I've moved the table uh, that way 14.29mm uh, and just as a double check uh, before I bolt the cylinder onto um, the three jaw chuck I've just put on um, one of the covers just to check that this centre drill is spot on and it is and the first hole that needs to be drilled is along this seam here. So I'll take that off. Bolt this back on. And as you can see the amount of space available is pretty tight now. And I shall double check that the rear is parallel with the milling table. And it is. Okay, so I've just had another thought before starting to uh, do any centre drilling. And that is, I've, I've just um, turned the table around 18 turns at a time. Just lowered the centre drill and just twisted it a little bit just to make a, a little mark on the casting where each of the centres is going to be drilled and I've just done that as a double check so I wouldn't like to sort of miscount and then drill a hole um, and find it's in the wrong position but I know now these marks are in the correct position um, so that's a good double check for me also um, it occurred to me that I need to work out how deep to tap and I've just put one of the studs in, one of the covers, with um, a nut on top. And that is about three and a half millimetres long. Now, I think, therefore, um, I need to drill down to a depth of round about six millimetres to enable me to um, cut threads to that depth. So that's what I'll be aiming for, 6mm deep holes. OK, so this is a 2.1mm drill bit and my target depth is 6mm. Well, unfortunately, um, I've run out of space because to tap I need to do that 
Um, now this is an R8 Collet Chuck and fortunately I've got an R8 Collet which that will fit into so hopefully I shall just get the right amount of space. Crikey I've not even got enough space to get the uh, Collet Chuck out. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to have to do unfortunately is I'm going to move, have to move the uh, Y axis um, that way and then move it back again uh, but I can keep track of it using the little gauge so I'll continue right round tapping I'll get back to you once I've completed it well that worked out very well so I just need to repeat the same process for the other side well I've attached the cylinder to the standard and it looks like I'm short of a, a stud here and um, and a nut, so I need to sort that out at some point. Um, I've also attached the sole plate to the box bed. And what I need to do now is attach the standard to the sole plate. And to do that, I need to machine the crosshead pin, which goes through the uh, conrod and onto the crosshead. Now the crosshead pin uh, is a should be a simple machining uh, process uh, so I'm hoping to do this off camera um, but the dimensions are um, a pin made out of stainless steel uh, 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter and on the end there's a 5BA thread which is three thirty seconds of an inch long and the rest of it is eleven thirty seconds of an inch and I think there's um, a little cut in it uh, for a screwdriver to screw it in well this little pin needed uh, a little bit of uh, fine adjustment with some emery paper um, just to uh, make sure that the crosshead sort of swivels okay which it does it was when I tightened it up at first it, it sort of caught it like pinched it uh, but that seems to be working okay you know so I'll uh, try and fit it into the standard well that seems promising quite free moving so all I need to do is uh, mark the position of the sole plate where the studs need to go put the studs in and uh, if it runs like that, I'll be very, very happy. Well, this is turning out to be really exciting now. I've uh, connected the standard to the sole plate and the conrod to the crosshead. Put the flywheel on and it turns really well. There's just a slight little tight spot which I need to look into. I can just feel it there. Um, but I'm very happy with that. Um, hope you like the result and uh, in my next couple of videos I'll be covering the valve assembly.